to another discussion of uh, RMO problem. This one is also from RMO 2002 and this is more of a counting problem. It's quite interesting actually and simple enough to understand. It says that we have the numbers from 1 to 10, all the integers and we split them into two disjoint collection. So two disjoint collections which means that we have one collection containing a1, a2, a3, a4, a5. We have another collection containing b1, b2, b3, b4 and b5. All of these numbers are from 1 to 10 and these two sets do not have anything in common. So the intersection of these two sets is empty and they together make up all these 10 numbers. Additionally, these elements a1 through a5 have certain other properties. a1 through a5 is an increasing sequence and b1 to, okay, so there will be b1 here. So b1 to b5 is a decreasing sequence. With this background, we want to show that if I take these pairs a1, b1, if I pair these up, a2, b2, a3, b3, a4, b4, and a5, b5, the claim is that the larger number in any pair is at least 6. That's the part 1 of the problem. Now, let's look into it. Now, as usual, we are interested not only in the solution, we are also interested in learning some problem solving strategy, which we can use elsewhere. So, here we will use a very simple problem solving strategy, test with a problem solving strategy, test, test with a special case. So often when we are asked to prove a general result, it is very effective to test with one particular case and see exactly what's happening. So here it says that any pair, if I pick any pair, one of the numbers in the pair, the larger one at least, will have six, will be six or more. Now suppose that is not the case. Let's see if, if that is not the case, what happens? Suppose A2, B2 is a pair where the larger number, the larger number is not at least 6. So basically both the numbers are 1 or are 5 or less which means both the numbers both the numbers are 5 or less now think about it for a moment if it is if the larger number is not at least 6 then obviously the other number which is smaller than the larger one will be also less than 6 which means both the numbers are 5 or less. Okay. Now, let's count the numbers which are 5 or less. Of course, A2 is less than equal to 5 and B2 is also less than equal to 5. Now, since A2 is less than equal to 5, clearly A1 is less than 5, right? Because A1 is less than A2. That's how the sequence is made a1 is less than a2 is less than a3 is less than a4 is less than a5. So clearly a1 is less than 5. Now as b2 is less than equal to 5, we have b1 greater than b2 is greater than b3 is greater than b4 is greater than b5. So all the numbers after b1 will also uh, after b2 will also be less than 5 b2 being less than equal to 5 
So B3 is less than 5, B4 is less than 5, B5 is less than 5, right? Because B2 we assumed is less than or equal to 5. Now, how many numbers then, how many numbers are 5 or less? Well, firstly, A2, B2 are both 5 or less. That's our starting point of the assumption. And then we saw A1 is 5 or, le or is less than 5, B3 is less than 5, B4 is less than 5, and B5 is less than 5. And we have a contradiction. Why? Because obviously we found 6 numbers which are 5 or less. But obviously that's not true because there are only 5 numbers from 1 through 5 which are 5 or less. So, clearly, if we assume otherwise, if we assume that the least number, uh, a larger number in any pair is not at least 6, we run into a very simple counting contradiction. So, this actually proves the first part of the problem. Of course, you have to rephrase the argument in the in case of a uh, in the general case. So, the let me give you a hint how to do that. Uh, we can start by stating that assume A k B k is a pair where the least number uh, or the I am sorry the larger number the larger number is not at least 6, which implies that a k is less than or equal to 5, b k is less than or equal to 5. Again, a k less than or equal to 5 implies, but a k less than or equal to 5 implies a 1 up to a k minus 1 are all less than 5. Of course, that's because a, a1, a2, a3, these are um, an increasing sequence. And bk plus 1 up to b5 are all less than 5. So, now you can count the number of numbers which are less than or equal to 5 and you will end up into 6 numbers which would be a contradiction. So, that completely proves the first part. Now, this for the second part we will use the first part. So, this is usually the case when you have a and have an RMO problem with two parts uh, you usually use the first part to uh, prove the second one and the second one is actually very simple and the reason is this that if just as we proved the least, so this is part 2, the larger number is at least 6. So, if we list all the larger numbers, so if we look into the larger numbers into the pair, in each pair, there will be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because the larger number is at least 6, right. So, if you look into each pair, look into each pair, the larger number of each pair is 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10. So, the smaller number of each pair, smaller number of each pair is 1, 2, 3, 4, now, understand this very carefully. I am not saying that whichever pair has 6, that pair has 1. Uh, that is not what I am saying. I am saying if you arbitrarily look into the pairs and pick out all the larger numbers from those 5 pairs, you will get these 5 numbers. Uh, similarly, if you look at the look at each 
look at each pair and find the smaller numbers from each one just pick them from each pair you will find all these five numbers so that's all that this two list lists mean now what are we interested to find out we are interested to find out a1 minus b1 plus a2 minus b2 absolute value of them so a1 minus b1 plus a2 minus b2 plus a3 minus b3 a4 minus b4 a5 minus b5 absolute value signs so if i want to compute the absolute value of a1 minus b1 i have to basically do this larger number of first pair minus smaller number of first pair so i look into a1 comma b1 i check the larger number whichever it is and i check the smaller number the larger minus the smaller is the absolute value of a1 minus b1 that's the definition of what absolute value sign means similarly we can say the same thing about the second pair so larger number of pair 2 minus smaller number of pair 2 and now you see what is going to happen I mean from each of these pairs we will find the larger minus the smaller for the third pair, third pair similarly larger minus the smaller for the fourth pair so I'm just writing larger 4 minus smaller 4 and finally larger 5 minus the smaller 5 now I have no idea which pair has which numbers and which numbers which number is larger in which pair and which number is smaller in which pair and I don't need to have that idea because you see what I have here is positive signs in front of each of the larger numbers right and I know that the larger numbers are these five numbers 6 7 8 9 10 so I, I may as well write 6 plus 7 okay let me not write like this it might seem that the second larger number is 7 it's not it might not be that but in some order in some order the larger numbers the five larger numbers are 6 7 8 9 10 and we have in this particular sum we have positive signs in front of each of them so we can write them like this and the five smaller numbers are 1 2 3 4 5 in some order so all we need to do is we compute 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 and we subtract from it 1 plus 2 1 2 3 and 4 and 5 and you will see that that would come up to 25 that would come up to 25 so it is extremely important to understand what we accomplished in this process what we accomplished is this that we have uh, pairs of numbers we have partitioned our into first 10 integers uh, into two disjoint splits two, two disjoint partitions and both of them are ordered one of them is ordered in the increasing order one of them is ordered in the decreasing order so there will be millions of such partitions I mean potentially there could be many such partitions maybe not millions but many such partitions of um, first 10 numbers and no matter how we partition it this particular difference sum of differences will always be same so this is the second thing that we learn about this problem it's an invariant property so no matter which two partitions you make of one numbers from 1 through 10 
this is the property that remains constant no matter how we partition it. Interesting enough, these two strategies looking for invariance and testing with special cases, these two problem solving strategies are extremely important uh, even at higher levels. I mean, if you are solving Indian and uh, national, uh, uh, national level problems or IMO problems or even at research level, you work with the special cases, you look at a system and think of what does not change when everything changes. These two questions form really the central theme of many problems. Thank you for watching, I will see you in the next discussion. Bye.